Welcome back to Slay and Shine Inner Peace Soul Care. My name is Clemence Lafreitas, and it's the holidays. This is a time of the year when a lot of us can feel a bit lonely, sad, isolated, um, just not in a good place mentally and emotionally for several different reasons. It could be like me, empty nester, and the kids are all gone off to college or as adults living in their own states, in their own homes. Sometimes we could be feeling left out or abandoned by our own families and not feeling a connection with other people. One of the things I noticed is when we're spending a lot of time alone and feeling alone is we begin to believe that we are introverts. (laughs) I know that happened to me, and I still think I have introvert tendencies, but I saw this video recently on Instagram, and it was a pastor saying he realized it's not that he's antisocial or shy. All the labels we put on ourselves or on our kids, and he realized that he is not those things. He's not an introvert. He just is not a match for a lot of people. And so I started thinking about my own life and how I began to allow relationships to take course, to fade. The only thing is, yes, it brings me more peace and less chaos, not having certain relationships take up a lot of my emotional real estate, (laughs) but then it also can leave us feeling alone. And when we feel alone, we end up craving or going back to relationships that are not well-suited or healthy or positive for our life. And then we're back into that vicious cycle, right? A vicious cycle of knowing that this is not good for us, but it's better than being lonely or alone. Think outside of the box. What if? Asking the question, what if? Just putting it out there into the universe, asking the question, what if I were in healthy, positive, emotionally well relationships? And let that vibrate through your body, through your soul, through your auric field, and see where it leads. You don't have to know the answers right away. You don't have to know who your next best friend is going to be, who your sister girlfriends are going to be. You just put it out there. But get an idea of what healthy, reciprocal, kind, giving, selfless relationships look like. And Focus on how you show up in relationships and how what you give, you also want in return and start listing, making a list of all the attributes that you have, that you give into relationships. As you start to recognize your gifting, your power, your light, new people start to show up. But also the people in our lives, especially in our families, start to treat us differently, especially with my mom. I had to, for for years, take in times off from her and just gave us space. Took that time to be very strong and centered within myself. My non-negotiables about how respect is given and shown to myself, had to give myself that respect. What I expect from others, I had to first expect (laughs) from myself. And then I was able to get back into relationships with family, but they now know what is okay and what's not okay. What is appropriate and what's not appropriate. Name calling, um, blaming, lying, that's not okay. And they know based on my actions in the past is if it happens, I will set a boundary. And so they're way more mindful. um, And I'm more mindful also of what they're 
trauma triggers are or what their insecurities are about themselves that they would then lean towards lying or excuses or put downs and name calling and where my limit is when it comes to that. I have a client who with her and her mom has really strong energetic cords. She takes unknowingly or unconsciously takes from her daughter's energy and her daughter's life force because she has not learned how to self-soothe or self-fill her own energy, her own joy, her own peace. So she um, leans on her daughter, expects for her daughter to do the things that she has not taken the responsibility to do for herself. And when we learn to cut the cords, we allow people to go through their own journey in life, allow them to experience the, um, the cause and effect <laughs> and the consequences of their own choices. And sometimes the consequences to some choices is that we give them space until they cannot be toxic in our lives. And when I was first married, my husband called it out. He would say, okay, we're hitting a half hour now at your parents' house. It's getting too long. You know, when you get past a half hour, there's going to be shouting, there's going to be fighting, there's going to be a lot of unhappy times. So know your limit, not just emotional limit, but time limit. You know, when, when people get too comfortable with you being around, sometimes they get a little bit more loose with how they speak and how they act. And so in the beginning, everybody's wearing a mask, everybody's nicey-nicey, huggy-kissy, all super positive. And then as the, as the masks come down and they get more lax, the, things start to fly. <laughs> so be mindful of how long that period is where the mask is on before it starts to go away. And then over time, when they start to learn what your boundaries are and what's okay, what are the non-negotiables, then that time period can get longer. So lastly, I want to talk about the loneliness and the um, isolation. It's not healthy to be isolated for too long. Um, there is a period of time that isolation is good when we are still you know, healing and figuring ourselves out when we're um, in this period of quietness to listen to our own souls, to journal, as long as you're doing the things you need to take care of yourself. And you're not just watching TV, numbing out and eating, um, but you're actually growing and healing. But journaling, praying, meditating, really getting to know your own self, having an intimate relationship with your soul, um, then growing your intuition because when you get really intimate with your soul you start to hear what you need to hear the signals the messages the lessons that your higher self and your soul wants to send your spirit guides holy spirit your ancestors want to give you direction there is a period of time that we do need to separate and be alone but don't let it go too far once you've raised your frequency, once you've raised your vibration and allowed yourself to be a brighter light, it's time to come out of the shell and go out and allow your light, your frequency, your vibration to attract to you, bring to you, allow to come into your space the right match, the alignments that is supportive for you, the alignments that will help not harm you. Once you've found out what your likes and dislikes are, what your passions are, once you know how you are as a friend, then go out and search for places, the things that are a good match for you. It might be volunteering at certain places where you're passionate about different causes or different interests that you like. If you like to draw, paint, dance, sing, go join some groups that do those kinds of things. Or if you're interested in learning something that has been 
in the back of your mind for a really long time. Maybe you want to learn a different language or learn to cook or learn public speaking. You may join um, Toastmasters or some group that focuses on the things that you want to grow and develop in. And then in those places, you'll begin to create a community around you that get you, that you're not weird in, that you actually fit into. And the, my biggest advice in this is to start healing that heart chakra, bring down the walls, soften the heart, let people in. And if, during your time of isolation, as you give yourself this um, unconditional self-acceptance, you will then be able to have relationships where you unconditionally accept other people, not the harmful parts of them, but the things about them that you normally would judge or dislike because you don't like the way they chew or how they walk or how they snore or their laughs, the things that you would normally think is weird or irritable to you, you'll accept and realize that that's a part of their beautiful, unique character. And it makes relationships better when we're not judging, <laughs> when we're not hating on people for being different, but we get to um, appreciate the differences and make that a part of why we love them. So I'm going to leave you with this, a little time to calm your central nervous system and allow yourself to be at peace with yourself. And when you're at peace with yourself, you can bring that peace to others. Deep breath in. Inhale four count, hold for four, and then exhale for five. Feel the depth of your soul, feel the depth of your light, feel the depth of your heart, and allow yourself to make room for others. But most importantly, give your soul a big room to honor its existence. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please do like and subscribe to this channel come back every single week share with a friend and check my website out slayandshine.com especially the recommended reading section for my audible affiliate link have a great week i'll see you again soon bye bye